It sounds simple when you just talk about it. A manufacturing company is born when an idea for a product seems like a slam dunk winner. The idea becomes a drawing. The drawing becomes a prototype. Steel is cut and bent and molded into a product that is tested and modified and retested. Patents are applied for, customers are introduced to the new product, and the job of selling the item is passed on to our sales and marketing staff. Word spreads, demand increases, feedback trickles in. And so the cycle begins for what we hope will be another successful product. But there are so many details that go into the successful production of our products that we sat down with our own experts to discuss the challenges they face on a daily basis. Well, it's been quite the transformation. I, I go back to the original weld shop across town uh, back in the late 60s. Uh, that's where I learned to weld and run a torch. And you know, we had 25, 30 employees at that time. When we look at our production reports and we have so many bins on order and so many power sweeps on order, we don't just say, well, we can only get 30 a week. We look at how many do we need. The important thing is the people don't run out of stuff. You just keep that steady stream of volume coming to them so they don't run out. At all times we're working on uh, where we want to place machines, where might be a better place to place machines. We're bringing in new machinery all the time. It takes a lot of thought, a lot of walkthroughs, a lot of times just to figure out kind of our best flow of our product through the plant. Steve Sukup does a lot of the uh, kind of the layout, uh, gives us the idea of kind of where he wants to go. Uh, if we're bringing new machinery in, take a look at it and see where the best fit is to get it out the quickest and the best way. It is about making uh, parts and being the most efficient. You have to be the low cost uh, producer. That is the, the key to manufacturing. Uh, we'll run reports by each uh, department, uh, see how many parts are coming through that department, and then analyze is that the best place uh, for that uh, routing to go through. And so like whether it's the trumps, the lasers, the benders, uh, like the benders, we uh, take a look at, do a de descending order, so the highest volume is the top one, and then we look at, is that the best place for the bender? Maybe this piece can be uh, done on a progressive die. And uh, over the last uh, 10 years, our company production has grown seven times in the last 10 years. We may find that we've had an increase in business um, for one of our particular product lines, so we need to expand a cell. We need to increase production, and all of those things require us to um, divide our manpower up, um, try to move products in and out, move machinery, which can take uh, multiple people from our R&D people, our maintenance staff, the people working within a cell. Steve was talking about a one and done, and everything is still judged on the old ball and string method. When you're manufacturing, from the time it start, the product starts until it's finished, how far does the ball of string go that you move, move it back and forth, back and forth, in and out? We've been setting up more cells where the product is finished. It started in that area and it's finished. The real goal for our end user is that uh, we put out a consistent quality part, the same piece every time, and that we can do it efficiently. Uh, we also take a look at balls of string and where the part's moving to across the plant. You know, our customer doesn't want to pay for forklift time. He wants that part done as efficiently as possible. That's what we want. When we can be at the end of the day, the low cost producer, putting out the quality part uh, and having a great relationship with our customers, uh, we'll succeed. I asked Steve to talk about one of our newest products here at Sukup Manufacturing, our new metal building line. Well, the newest uh, product line that I believe is just a great fit for uh, Suga Manufacturing, our uh, pre-engineered metal building line. Uh, we have the newest uh, submerged arc rafter line in the U.S. to make the huge rafters. Uh, we were in that catch-22. We needed a new building, a 200 by 510 foot building. And so in order to make it, we had to get something set up. And uh, I was determined that uh, we're going to make our own metal building uh, for ourselves and so we set up the rafter line. We've got good quality individuals that have gone through welding schools. Uh, we're getting them trained on our submerged arc line to make uh, uh, rafters. Uh, we're going to have an individual. Uh, we're getting certified uh, welding uh, uh, instructor uh, operator here at Suga Manufacturing to maintain the quality 
We have our own standing seam roof line. Uh, we have actually two profiles that we can roll. Uh, we've got four different profiles on side panels, and then match that up with the uh, purling lines that we've already had for our commercial bins and uh, feel that uh, Metal Buildings is that next stage for our product line that we're ready to tackle and our uh, customers are requesting it. To make sure each production area or cell is running as efficiently as possible, Nadine Reggett explains the newly adopted 5S program being used throughout the plant. The 5S's stand for sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. So we, as a core group, we try to choose departments where we think we can have the largest impact on um, our production by going through those departments and applying the knowledge that um, and the training that we give to each department in order to make them more efficient. Obviously a company that's been around uh, for any time frame uh, has a tendency to gather materials in each department that are maybe not needed and crucial to the day-to-day -day activities of that department. So part of what we're doing is to sort through those items, decide what needs to be kept and not kept, set everything that they need within that department in an order so that they can locate it quickly and efficiently and then they will clean their area. Sometimes there, there may be painting involved, there may be equipment and maintenance that needs to happen. Then they will try to make a sustaining program so that there is always weekly monthly different methods that they need to use and different people are assigned to different tasks all the time in order to keep that going. At times all this planning and organizing and sorting activity can be extremely challenging. We built a new facility um, to house our dryer line and also our material handling lines and what that enabled us to do was to have two lines side by side for the dryers. We put a little bit of timing on it to bring enough through to keep us uh, going, uh, but we'll uh, snap a date and say we got to have it by this date and uh, we all work a little bit better when we know what the finish line is. And the supervisor uh, located the people that he felt were the best suited to making that move. They segregated the parts that they needed for current dryer production from those that could be easily moved. Uh, we then had to take all of those parts, move them basically across the entire facility. Again, looking at that process flow, what is the best way to get dryers out as quickly as we possibly can. We did make some adjustments as, as setups were being made, but the supervisor and the line people really made that happen, all the while continuing to produce on their old line and get those dryers out and ready for the drying season. When you consider the timing of the move and how many individual parts go into the production of a dryer, this was an incredible achievement. Another critical part of the production equation is the constant addition of seasonal employees. Starting in March and running well into the summer, Sukup Manufacturing added more than 100 new employees for the second year in a row. Well, it has been quite a challenge the last few years uh, where each of these last uh, two years we've brought on uh, around 100 employees each year. And uh, we have found good quality individuals that want to work hard. Uh, our retention rate's been very uh, uh, strong for that uh, group. And uh, we do take a lot more time for training. We spend uh, half a day on safety training, going over different uh, machines that they may be using, but also for our different departments, we have people sign off the lead person that says, hey, I've spent time with this individual. Uh, this person's ready to run this punch press, uh, press break, or work in the laser department and be a, a team member. Of course, we have a lot of highly skilled operators at Soka Manufacturing, very highly skilled. But when you hire seasonal people for the summer, they, of course, are not going to be as trained. But with the live tooling machines and the lasers and that, they don't have to become an operator. They just become part of the operation where they're, they just take pieces off and put them on and they're taught how to check the part for tolerances, but they don't have to know everything about that machine just to be an operator. But they're, they're a great help to the operator that can be doing other things while the, that person stands there and catches parts off of it. Well, one thing to make this all get accomplished, it is a great team effort. I mean, whether, you know, with John Swanson, plant manager, Dave O'Connor, uh, we keep bringing others into the mix to give them support, whether it's a Ben Furley, uh, Nick Sukup, he enjoys uh, working with uh, some of the R&D, the tool and die, handy in the supply chain. Uh, we've got great supervisors out there that care in each of the buildings, whether it's uh, 
Mike and Ed and uh, Pat and Gene out there uh, uh, grabbing onto the different uh, areas. Uh, we have project managers like uh, Troy Slinger that's taking over buildings or Nadine working with some of the other uh, projects, people that care to put out a good product and be responsive to our customers. So it's been a, a great team effort uh, and that's what I think uh, sets Suka apart. It's a close relationship with our customers and a great group of uh, individuals that want to put out a good quality product for us. So we're gearing up for another great year here at Sukup Manufacturing. We just wanted to give our customers a little peek behind the scenes so they can rest assured that we are constantly trying to improve the processes, the planning, and the personnel that manufacture the equipment they rely so heavily on. We are certainly looking forward to the tremendous opportunities we have in making Sukup Manufacturing your one-stop solution in the grain handling and storage industry.